As an INFJ, you might feel like your quiet power goes unnoticed, that you're being underestimated, that people don't know what you have to offer and how strong you actually are. But what if I told you that it's exactly this quality that makes you stand out, that makes you unforgettable? You just have to lean into it. We have to learn how to use that to our advantage and people will not only recognize what we have to offer, but they will see how much we are able to sacrifice for them if we really decide to. Otherwise, people don't even know how much you're giving up in order to make them feel good. Here's something to keep in mind. As INFJs, we know that we're good listeners. People value this in us. And very often we come across as making people, you know, feel good about themselves because we hear them, we listen to them, we make them feel seen. But so often we ourselves are unaware how powerful we actually come across. And because of that, we either try to bring out other parts of ourselves, try to mimic a different version of ourselves, and really don't allow this quiet, intensive power to come out. So next time when you're in a situation with a person that you're either getting to know or somebody that you feel like might underestimate you or might not know what you have to offer, how strong you actually are, and how your quiet intensity is actually a game changer, show that through your body language. And you know you can do this. This is not about pretending to be somebody else. It's about staying in the moment. I know you feel the energy in the room, so command the energy. When you enter a room, really be all present. Take pauses, don't answer right away, don't remove uncomfortable silence. This is not your task. Your task in that moment is just to allow your presence to be as powerful as it actually is. Use it in situations that aren't high stake for you, just practice this out and I promise you, you will see a huge difference in the way people react towards you. I can tell you from personal experience because this is one area that I have a lot of experience in. I always try to overexplain myself, try to, you know, diminish my light, make other people feel seen, or, you know, just pretend to be somebody else in order to make another person feel good. I thought if I made room for others, they would appreciate what I'm doing for them they would recognize how much I'm able and willing to give up of myself in order to make them feel good. And that this act in itself will make them see, you know, not only how powerful I actually am, but also how nurturing I am, how much good I want to do for that person. But the truth is people cannot see this. It's just not possible. People see what is shown to them and all they're seeing is just a facade because we are not really that facade. We're not the person who's always giving up of themselves. You need another person to see your presence because that's what's going to make people aware of who you are, what you're able to do, what you're willing to do for yourself, and then they will value what you're doing for them. And to do that, it's all about standing in your own presence. Very often it is said, the person who doesn't talk much, that's the person who's the most confident in the room. But there is a way of, oh, I'm shying away from a situation because I don't wanna put myself in the front because I don't wanna say anything that might make another person uncomfortable. And there's another way of saying, well, I'm not going to make myself smaller. You can be in a room, not say anything, and still demand respect just by your presence alone. So really aim for that. You have that power. You know that when you walk into a room, you understand the dynamic, you understand the energy in the room. So make this part of who you are. Don't shy away. Don't put yourself into the corner. Like be everything that you want to be. Feel your best. And I promise you, people will start looking at you differently. You can change that. I used to be the person who's always bullied. I was always the person who people looked at weird, who was ostracized. And I changed that entire concept. Now, I don't even want to be in those situations. But being able to show up in a situation and know that you don't have to say much. It's just you showing up unapologetically the way you are and knowing who you are and standing firm on that, even energetically, through your posture, through what you say, through what you answer, allowing pauses to happen because your quiet power will shine through if you allow it. So really try it out. And when you see that certain situations are not making you feel good, 
walk away calmly and really relax because that is what your quiet power and your intensity allows you to do without feeling bad at all. In the INFJ Epic Life Bootcamp, we really dive into this quiet power. We really make it one of the cornerstones in becoming who we are. We don't have to explain ourselves. We don't have to make ourselves look a certain way in order for people to get our message. When we know that we're able to go towards the things we want and we actually take action, we start making it happen independent of how people think about us or how they think about our actions, that shows a power that other people are not used to. So use that superpower of yours, lean into your quiet intensity, lean into creating the life you always wanted, and you'll see how the relationships around you will just automatically switch up. They will change and you will not be able to recognize the way they used to be. You will be surprised how much they will actually change once you start showing up in your full power that is in essence a quiet power, a power that is all about you staying in your lane and not caring what other people are doing. If you want to be part of our amazing community of INFJs who are creating that power and that excitement in their lives, then join this bootcamp round that launches October 26th. Everything you need to know, you can find in the links in the description. So we're talking the free poster. You can sign up for the waiting list in order to get access to the early bird price. Everything you might want to know about the bootcamp, you can now find on the website. We have an FAQ section and everything else you might want to know. So check out the links and I can't wait to see you there. As INFJs, we often feel like quiet observers. We understand how other people tick, we understand what their insecurities are, what they value, and we believe that this is what we can offer to other people. And we very often see it in a way of, if I'm not giving that to other people, then I'm worthless in their eyes. They're not going to value me, they're not going to appreciate me. But the truth is that the fact that you do understand other people is what makes you magnetic. I just read this quote a couple of days ago and it just became even clearer to me. Being charismatic is not so much about you being interesting. Yes, we're interesting, of course we are. But it's the fact that we can see what makes another person interesting. We can make another person feel interesting. And we're able to do that because we can see other people. Being able to quietly observe other people, to make space for them, is a superpower and that is what makes us so powerful. That is what makes us so magnetic. So we have to stop underestimating how much we bring to the table. If we don't value it, people are not going to value it. I've been in situations where I've made other people feel so good about themselves. I showed them the way I could see them in such a great way that they feel amazing about themselves. And how did they respond? Well, they weren't even aware that they were feeling good because they were in my presence. They weren't aware that I made them feel this way. And on top of that, because they weren't used to feeling so good, they actually start putting me down. So many INFJs have experienced this. I know this is not just me. You know, I've talked to so many INFJs over the last 10 years, and it comes down to this. If you don't value that you can make another person feel like this, if you don't value just your ability to make another person feel good about yourself when you're in their presence, then they're not going to value it either. So it's all about starting to value our quiet power. And I really wanna to talk to you about three essential things that you can do. You can do this as a practice, you can write it down. Once you start applying those three things in your life, you'll see the changes. We so often need to see the changes happening in real life because until we actually see the evidence, until we see that people change the way they approach us, we might not believe it, but when we have evidence that this is really working, that's when it really clicks. So the first thing you can do right away is don't answer right away. If people write you a message, you don't need to answer right away. If people ask something of you, you don't have to give them an answer right in this moment. So often we don't wanna let the other person wait. On top of that, we don't wanna play games. Somebody asks us, why shouldn't we answer right away? But Every single time you give your attention to somebody, you're giving away energy. It doesn't have to be a bad thing, right? We want to give energy. This is part of the entire exchange of who we are. We give energy, we get energy back. So this is a good thing in itself. But we don't want to give our energy and our attention to people, circumstances, dynamic that don't value that energy. And let me be clear, that doesn't mean that the other person is a bad person. 
They just have to become aware of what you're doing here, of how valuable your energy actually is. Because your energy isn't just any energy. It's very intentional. It makes the other person feel good. It makes the other person feel seen. There's huge value in it. But if you're the one who doesn't see it as something that valuable, I promise you the other person isn't going to see that it's something valuable either. That's why so often we get into situations where we have to door slam, where we feel like, oh, I just got really angry because that person overlooked what I was doing for them. So even if you say yes to a situation, even if you help another person, make them aware that this is not something that you do because you didn't want the uncomfortable pause. This is not something because you had a problem with making the other person question how you're going to react. If you're going to say yes to a situation or if you answer, you're going to do that because this is what feels most in alignment with you. And you feel like this is something that I can do knowing that, you know, I'm okay with that decision. I'm not doing this out of fear or out of some kind of negative emotion. I'm doing this because I actually have the capacity and I want to say yes to that situation or I want to pay attention to that person. They've shown me that they respect me. They've shown me that they value that energy. And maybe through pulling back, they will actually recognize that this is not something to be played with. This is a powerful energy and we're not going to give it away to just anybody. The next thing you can do is to set boundaries in your next conversation. There are people around you who will always bring the topic back to them. Again, doesn't make them bad people, that's just their energy. But if they're being dismissive, if they don't care about your point of view, don't back off. Make it a point to state what you have to say, state your opinion, state your truth, show them in a calm way that your opinion matters to you. Very often we feel like, yeah, that person just doesn't get it, so I'm going to stay quiet. But the thing is this, listening to another person is giving away energy. It's draining. It's you focusing on somebody else. And as introverts, as INFJs, this takes away from us. It really is something we actively do. It's something that requires energy and it's something we give to other people. So if they're being dismissive of us, don't think, oh, I'm not going to participate in that conversation anymore. I'm just going to stay quiet you're still giving away energy. You're still showing them respect while they're dismissing you. So bring the conversation back to your point calmly in a way that doesn't overpower anybody, but assertively and know that you're not giving your way your attention towards the other person if they're not giving you the respect you deserve. Practice this over and over again. At first it might feel like, yeah, what a waste of time. But remember, it's not like you're tuning the other person out. You're still paying attention to them. And if a person is being dismissive, if they just listen to you for a minute and wait in order to speak, then they have to learn that this is not the person that you are. There's so much power in your quiet nature. There's so much power in you listening to them because you really see them and the feedback you give them energetically through your answers, through your perspective is so valuable. And the way they're going to respect that and value that if you don't give it away freely. So that means making sure that if a person is being avoidant of what you have to say, if they're being dismissive of what you have to say, you're not listening to them. You're speaking again from your perspective and you're making your truth the most important thing in that moment, not what they have to say. You're not making space for a person in your mind, even while they're talking, if they're not acting in a respectful way towards you. The more often you practice this, the more often you bring the conversations back to what you want to say, or if you wanted to say something, what it would be and say that out loud, the more the other person is going to recognize that there's value in you listening to them. Because you have the capacity to stay on your path, you just choose to make room for them because you're a kind person but you're not doing this if the person doesn't recognize what you're actually capable of. The third thing you can do is to take the lead in small groups. So when I'm with my friends, for example, I'm probably most likely going to be the person who doesn't want to be the lead. I don't care what we do. I let my friends decide where we want to go, what we want to do, and I just lean back, right? 
This is an ideal situation, but the truth is that if we always do that, we're going to not only be in situations that might not be the most exciting for us, but people are also not going to be able of our perspective and what we have to offer. I know it takes energy to take the lead in a small group. I know it takes energy to be the one who decides and takes action on doing a certain activity. But I promise you, if you use your energy to really guide the group into situations, into ideas that you have come up with, you'll actually have more energy at the end of it because you'll be in surroundings and in activities that you like People will appreciate your quiet nature because they can trust that you have some insights, that you have some ideas of how everything could turn out great for everybody. And it will be a positive spiral effect. Go the risk, take the risk. I know so often we feel like, well, if I take this on, then I'm going to be responsible if it doesn't turn out good. But guess what? You're also going to be responsible when it turns out great. So lean into that. You don't have to be the leader all the time. You don't have to take on groups of 50 people and tell them where to go and what to do. But just practice this when you're around your family, when you're around your friends. Really make it a point to practice taking the lead and show them that you can make decisions that will make other people's lives better, even if it's just in that moment. The more they see that, the more they start valuing your opinion. They will really listen once you really think like, okay, I need to tell them now is the point where they have to make a different choice because they will trust in your choices because you've shown through your actions that you make good choices, that you have great ideas, that you believe in what you're doing. If you're not believing in your own ideas, other people cannot believe in them either. And all of that you can do while staying quiet, while staying calm, and without getting loud in any kind of way. It's easy to feel overlooked as INFJs, particularly when we're not the loudest in the room, we're not the most assertive ones, and I'm definitely not advocating for you to pretend like you're somebody like that. It's actually our quiet nature that is one of our biggest superpowers. It allows us to listen to people. It allows them to really see them. It allows them to guide them in a way that only we may be able to because we see them on such a deep level and from such a unique perspective. But it's on us to really start valuing this as an incredible power and as something that has to be valued. You are the gatekeeper to this knowledge. You'll see people will change their perspective. You'll see people will either step away from you because they don't want to be around you because you just show them what they are not willing to see or they want to get closer to you and trust your judgment. All of that can happen without you pretending to be somebody you're not. But you have to be the one who starts valuing your power to begin with. You have to set boundaries. You have to revoke access from people who are not showing you the respect you deserve. And you have to make choices and take a lead in certain situations where you feel like you know best. It's totally okay to take that risk. You'll see that it will be worth it. The more you trust your own voice and not just in a way of, oh, I know it's right in my mind, but you actually start taking action on it. You take the lead in certain situations. You show everybody around you that you trust your own judgment. That's when people will recognize your quiet power and you didn't have to become loud or pushy in any kind of way to begin with. When you embrace your quiet power, you'll see how much influence you actually have. I didn't know how much influence I had over people in my life until I was willing to walk away, until I started valuing what I have to offer. And it's not just about what you can do for other people. It's the way you see the world. It's the way you see others. It's your energy. It's the way you can look at a person and see the best parts in them. It's the way you encourage them to remind themselves how great they actually are. It is a superpower. It is something that is incredibly valuable, but we have to be the ones who start valuing it first. And that means protecting it, removing access to it if it's necessary. And it all starts with what you focus on. Focus on creating the life you always wanted first and then give access to people, to your mind, to how you see the world once they prove step by step that they're valuing who you are and what you have to offer. Remember, if you want to join our amazing community of INFJs 
who are building that life together in such a way that people around you start valuing you more and more without you actively having to do something because it just becomes second nature, then join us in the next bootcamp round, which launches on October 26th. Everything you might want to know, you can find in links in the description. Join the waiting list to get access to the early bird prize and download the free poster to get an overview on the topics we cover. I can't wait for you to join us. And if you want to watch another video now that is in line with today's topic, then check out the video you see on the screen right now. I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.